Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video we will explore HTTP4S in a comprehensive tutorial. HTTP4S is one of the most prominent libraries for Scala HTTP servers and clients, and this video will attempt to deconstruct most of its critical features. Now, this video will be quite difficult, so this is generally for comfortable Scala programmers and maybe, just maybe, you've had an introduction to CATS or CATS Effect for which we have a bunch of videos here on the Rock the JVM channel and a bunch of courses on the Rock the JVM website. Now, as always, I'm going to write codes from scratch, so I'll recommend that you code with me in this video. Check out the CATS and CATS Effect course coming soon. And whenever you need a template or an overview about the HTTP4S features, just refer back to the video or to the very comprehensive blog version of this video written by one of my prominent students, Ricardo. So uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description and without further ado, I'm going to jump into the code. And for this tutorial, I've created a new project. So this is a plain SBT project here in IntelliJ and I've created a simple application called HTTP4S tutorial and here under build SBT, we have a bunch of library definitions. Now, at this moment, HTTP4S is yet to have a 1.0 version, but it's a pretty advanced milestone release. So I'm pretty confident that most of the features that we're going to discuss in this video are going to stay the same until 1.0. Also, we are using Scala version 2.13. Now, most of the code that we're going to write in this video is also applicable for Scala 3, and I'm also going to mention which parts of the code you will need to change if you're writing Scala 3 instead of Scala 2. And as for library definitions, we have here a bunch. We have Blaze Server, which is an implementation of a server that can serve, uh, that can um, accept HTTP requests. We have HTTP4S Circe, which is a serialization library specific to HTTP4S based on Circe, which is a general JSON serialization library for Scala. And HTTP4S DSL is a library for extension methods. And you're going to see quite a lot of these in the video. So Back to HTTP4S tutorial, I've started with a small typo here, and HTTP4S tutorial will attempt to write a very simple HTTP application with some REST endpoints, and as an example for this video, we're going to build a small movie database, tiny application that can serve uh, endpoints about movies and about directors of those movies. So imagine you're watching Justice League and you want some details about that movie or select movies by year or by director and so on and so forth. So we're going to expose a bunch of REST endpoints for a movie database application. So imagine you were building a very teeny tiny IMDB in this video. All right, so first things first, we are going to describe the types that we're going to work with in terms of domain. So I'm just going to create some small, uh, simple types. I'm going to define a type called actor, which would normally be a case class, but right now I'm going to simplify that to a plain string. I'm going to define a case class for a movie, and the movie will have an ID of type string, a title of type string, a year of type int, a bunch of actors as a list of actor and we have a director which is an actor not an actor but an actual string because a director is a director it's not an actor it might be but whatever all right so we have a case class which i'm going to call director and let's assume that this director has a bunch of stats or a bunch of affiliations but i'm just going to wrap that as first name as a string and last name as a string. A plain data type with just two fields. You can add a bunch more if you're interested. Now I'm going to have a two string here so that we can print it much more easily. So I'm going to have an over a two string and I'm going to write an S interpolated string as first name space last name, All right? So no director with Jack Snyder or whatever. Okay, so these are plain data types that we're going to work with in terms of domain. If you're doing your own proper IMDB version, you're probably going to have 
a bunch more data types and a bit more complex than these. But we're going to keep these as an example. Now, given these data types, we want to design a small HTTP REST application which exposes some endpoints. We will expose a get endpoint that will retrieve all the movies of a director made during a given year. So get all movies for a director under a given year. Then we will have a get endpoint for the list of actors for a movie and adding a new director to the application, maybe a post endpoint to add a new director uh, to our director's database, all right? All right, so here's what we need to do. We will focus on the route definition and match HTTP endpoints, headers, path, and query parameters first. So we will describe the structure of our HTTP application. And then we will learn how to read a request body into an object, into one of these case classes, and translate that object body into a response that we will see in the console. And then finally, we are going to instantiate that HTTP server and start serving requests. All right, now, the HTTP4S library is based on the concept of a request and a response. So we have something like request gets into a response. So an HTTP server is basically a function that for every request that it receives, it will return a response. We call these functions routes and a server is nothing more than a set of these functions chained together. Now, very often, producing a response from a request means interacting with databases, with some external services, which may have some side effects. So we aim to maintain referential transparency through wrapping uh, responses that we will return into an effect type that we call f. So we will return an f of response, where the f is a higher kind of type, which is itself generic, and we're going to instantiate this f Mean, meaning we are going to give it a concrete type at the very end when we spawn the application, usually in terms of the cat's effect IO type. But in general, we will wrap our responses in effect type F. However, not all of the requests will find a route. So we are going to have some requests where they don't have a responses. So instead of F on a response, we are going to obtain an F of option response because for a request, we might not know what to respond with. So this is essentially an HTTP server, a request to F option response. Now there are a bunch of deeper abstractions that you can use here with an option T monad transformer or with the Kleisley data type that you can find in CATS. I describe all of these in the CATS course if you're interested, but I'm not gonna bore you with all of these abstractions in this video. So. In essence, we are going to deal with an alias of this thing, which is HTTP routes F. So in terms of HTTP4S, the type HTTP routes F denotes this kind of function. Now, during this tutorial, we will use some methods or implicit, that is given values in SCAL3, that you might not know how to find if you don't know the right imports. So for this tutorial, I'm going to give you a bunch of imports that you can add at the top so that you don't need to concern yourself at all with a bunch of the DSL methods that the compiler would not find otherwise and um, giving you frustration along the way. I know it had for me when I learned this or these kinds of libraries because they are based on implicits quite often. So I will recommend that you go to the blog version that I'm going to leave in, uh, as a link in the description to this video and scroll down where you have a bunch of imports at the beginning. I want you to go ahead and copy those, all of them, and paste them into the, the project that we're going to write in this video. So cats, cats effect and cats implicits, they are extension methods and type class instances for all the composition that we're going to write in this video. Then we have HTTP4S underscore, which will import a bunch of abstractions from HTTP4S, including the one that I've just described. HTTP4S Cersei will import the decoders uh, functionalities and encoders to turn JSON values into case classes and vice versa. Then we have Cersei generic auto and Cersei syntax for automatic um, case class 
encoding and decoding generation, and uh, this is pretty powerful. Then we have HTTP4S DSL and DSL impl for a bunch of operators that we're going to use while decomposing HTTP requests. Then we have headers for uh, writing our own custom headers, including cookies, and I'm going to show that in the rest of the video. And then we have implicits and server for other bunch of auto magic functionality in HTTP4S. So with these kinds of imports, you can basically pretty much um, spawn any kind of HTTP4S server. So if you want to spawn your own application, I recommend you use these imports so that you don't have any headaches. So let's start by imagining a route that returns the list of movies of a director as something similar to get um, localhost API movies and a link or an URL would look something like slash API slash movies with director equals uh, Zach percent 20 Snyder. So that's a space and then and year equals 2021. So we have some query parameters in our get endpoint. All right, so every road corresponds to an instance of these HTTP routes F. So we are going to define a method called uh, get or movie routes that responds to these kinds of requests. So I'm going to define a method called movie routes and I'm going to type it with a generic type F, which is itself generic. And this returns HTTP routes of F. Now, in order to use all the magic functionalities of HTTP4S, we're going to create a small instance that I'm going to call it DSL. And this is created by HTTP4S DSL typed with F. And this HTTP4S DSL is a small uh, apply method that will return a bunch of methods uh, correctly typed with F. And I'm going to import DSL underscore. And DSL underscore imports a bunch of magic that we're going to describe in our declarative HTTP routes. So I'm going to return an HTTP routes instance by saying HTTP routes of, and I'm going to type it with F, and I'm going to create a small partial function that will decompose our paths or our um, queries here in our endpoints. So I'm going to say a small case and I'm going to write get. So this will be a method that we are going to chain with tiny arrow. So this is a thin arrow, which is an object with an unapply method. And then the object being matched is the path. So I'm going to have an object called root with the capital R. And root is also an object which has a bunch of magic methods like slash and then I'm going to add a string such as movies. All right, so we get a get method under the path root slash movies. And this object that we obtain over here also has a bunch of auto magic methods. For example, colon question mark is starting a query parameter matching. So I'm going to write this operator here, colon question mark, which marks the start of the query parameters matching. And we are going to write a bunch of query parameter matches here on the right hand side after this operator. Now, in order to write query parameter matchers, we will need to define some objects here with the appropriate unapply methods. And HTTP4S also provides the functionality for that by creating an object. And I'm going to define that as object, assuming I can type correctly. And I'm going to call this director query param matcher. So I've just created a plain object, but this object extends a class that's called query param decoder matcher. And query param decoder matcher takes a type argument, which is the object being extracted out of the pattern match. So in our case, we are interested in the string and the name of the query param that HTTP4S will try to extract from our URL. So in our case, we want director. So if we are 
creating this object called director query param matcher. We can use it here in our deconstruction of the query. So I'm going to use director query param matcher. And as an uh, argument here, we're going to use a pattern. So I'm going to say director, director. So when we write something like this, this is a pattern that Scala will automatically deconstruct because query param decoder matcher can create unapply methods. So director query param matcher with director will actually fetch the value associated to the director uh, query parameter from the URL. So this is pretty magical over here. And also I'm going to create another query parameter for the year. And if you want to chain query parameters, you can say plus ampersand here. So plus ampersand will tell HTTP4S to look for another query parameter after the ampersand in the URL. And we need a year query param matcher. And the year query param matcher, I'm going to uh, write as an object. So I'm going to write an object year query param matcher extends. And I'm going to write optional query param decoder matcher. So we have query param decoder matcher, which always extracts a string out of the query parameter denoted by the name director in the URL. But optional query param decoder matcher will extract an optional, and I'm going to type it with a non standard type like year from Java SQL. So I'm going to uh, import year automatically. So a year is from, not from Java SQL, from Java time. So notice that we have a custom data type here and the name of the query parameter is year. Now the problem is that for the query param decoder matcher with string, HTTP4S has decoders or parsers for strings, but HTTP4S doesn't really have parsers for year. So we will need to add an implicit or in Scala 3 style, we will need to add a given instance that will automatically parse a number and turn that into a year so that HTTP4S can turn the year parameter from an int, which is what it will already get from the URL into the year object. So this is how you can match a query parameter of a different type other than the Scala uh, standard types. So I'm going to write an implicit I'm going to write an implicit val. I'm going to call this year query param decoder, decoder. And this will be a query param decoder of type year. All right, so we have a query param decoder, not a query param decoder matcher. So an optional query param decoder matcher will need an implicit of this type. And query param decoder of that particular type will instruct HTTP4S to parse this value 2021 and turn that into a year value. So in order to create a query param decoder year, we will need to rely on a query param decoder of a standard type, in our case, an integer. So we will have query param decoder of type int. And query param decoder of type int will automatically parse an int value. So 2021, but we'll need to turn that 2021 into a year. So we will need to run the map method. And from the uh, year int, we will return a year value. So I'm going to write year from Java time of year int. So HTTP4S will run this query param decoder of int from the 2021 query parameter and map that to a year data type. So this is how you can match a query parameter of your own data type, regardless of whether HTTP4S supports it automatically or not, from a query param decoder of a standard type that HTTP4S supports. All right, with that out of the way, we will need to have a year query param matcher of year. And director will be of type string and year will be of type option year, All right. So this whole magic over here is a single pattern that HTTP4S will deconstruct based on parsing the URL from the get request. So that was quite a mouthful. 
So the implementation I'm going to leave with question marks over here because most of the time was explaining what this big thing does. I'm going to also add a get endpoint for this second endpoint, get all actors for a movie. This should stay still under the movie's endpoint. So I'm going to have a case get with root slash movies. But in this case, we are going to add another slash with the movie identifier so that we can return all the actors. And I'm going to run a particular variable here. I'm going to use UUID var from org hp4s. And UUID var extracts a, a string out of the query parameter and turns that into a unique identifier. And I'm going to call that movie ID. And then I'm going to add slash actors, for example, because if you get root slash movie slash some ID, and you might want to add multiple paths here. Maybe you want actors, maybe you want the title, maybe you want all the movies related to that genre or whatever. All right, so I'm going to add slash actors here. And I'm going to uh, return question marks here because we're not ready to implement all the endpoints yet. All right. Now, after we wrote the endpoints, we get a request for the compiler for no implicits found for monad f. So we need the f to satisfy the presence of an implicit monad f in scope. So I'm going to add a monad type constraint here in the type definition. All right, so f must quote unquote be a monad, or in other words, have an implicit or a given monad f in scope. Cool. So instead of implicits, you probably uh, knew this already if you're interested in learning or writing Scala 3. Instead of an implicit, you will write a given instance. All right. Cool. So um, we have variables here. We have two endpoints. And I'm also going to have the endpoints for the director uh, paths over here. All right. Let's do this. And for this one, I'm going to define another method called director, director routes. And I'm going to add type argument f, which is itself generic. I'm also going to make it a monad right off the bat. And this is an HTTP uh, routes with f. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it here. And we have a partial function under HTTP routes of. And just to make things easy, I'm going to add a get endpoint for the root slash, for example, directors path, and I'm going to get all the details of a particular director. And instead of the post to add a new director, I'm also going to get details about a director. Okay, so I'm going to write a get under root slash directors and I'm also going to need a um, slash, uh, for example, a director name. So I'm going to add a slash and I'm going to need to parse that particular string into a director instance. Now, the director name is, for example, uh, Zach percent 20 Snyder. So this is a simple string, but I will need to extract a director case class instance out of that. So we need the first name and last name out of it. So in case you want to parse pieces of your path into one of the case classes that you support, this is a new uh, particular functionality that I want to uh, show you here in this video to be able to parse uh, and extract values out of your URL. So for uh, this kind of use case, you will need an object with an unapply method that takes a string and returns an option of the data type that you want to support, in our case, the director case class. So I'm going to define an object, I'm going to call this director path, and I'm going to define an unapply method that takes a string with a capital S, of course, and returns an option of director. All right. Now, given a string, I can return a director if that string conforms to the uh, structure that requires a director. So I'm going to uh, write something like try, and for try, you need to import scala util try here. All right. So I'm going to try to split that by space. So I'm going to have val tokens 
as string split by space. And then I'm going to attempt to create a director out of those two tokens. So I'm going to have director with tokens zero and tokens one in my place. So, and then I'm going to return an option director and I can convert this try instance to option if you want to return an option. So this is pretty much all you have to do. And after you have director path object with an unapply method, you can use that as a pattern here. So I can use director path with whatever I extract out of that. And I'm going to return uh, a director value. And I'm going to return some question marks at this moment. So have get slash root slash director slash director path. All right. And of course, my code should not compile here because I haven't added a case yet. But after you add the case, then we have a pretty similar structure as before. All right, so these are director routes. Now, we have two distinct HTTP routes, which you can use in different parts of your application if you create a more complex one. So you will have a movie route in some part of your application and a director route in some other part of your application if you have modules or whatever. And whenever you need to compose these routes, you will need to write something like all routes, all routes. And I'm going to use the same generic F, which is a monad, and this will return an HTTP routes F. And whenever you need to compose or chain these routes together, you will need something like movie routes. And then you will need a special method called combine, which is the symbol from the cat's semigroup K type class. And semigroup K is the higher kinded uh, type class for combine. And I'm going to use, um, then I'm going to have direct routes and I'm going to combine those. And in order to have the types properly, I'm going to type that with F and director routes with F. Now, this method is an extension method for semigroup K. So you can find that in cat's syntax semigroup K underscore. And if you want to learn more about semigroup uh, K or higher kind of semigroups, you can check out the cat's course. All right, but we already have that particular import because we added, added the mother of all cats imports with cats implicit. So we're fine there. All right, and if you want to create all routes, meaning all these chained routes, and then create a default route, um, meaning return a 404 if neither of the, these routes match, you can define another method called all routes complete. And I'm going to type that with F, which is a monad. And I'm going to return, instead of an HTTP routes F, I'm going to return an HTTP app F, which is a simplified version of HTTP routes. So I'm going to return an HTTP app with F. And as an implementation, I'm going to call all routes F and dot all not uh, or not found. So you will return a 404 if neither of these routes match. And HTTP app is HTTP with F and F, and HTTP is this Kleisley that denotes the uh, HTTP routes that I defined earlier. So HTTP uh, or HTTP app is a simplified version of the uh, HTTP routes F type alias that you can find in HTTP 4S. All right, not spending too much time on all the abstractions. And uh, I'm going to get into the implementations of these endpoints because we have the skeleton in place. Now at this phase of our application, we will need to generate some responses. And I'm going to start with this director routes thing because it's much easier. So assume that we want to get all the details about a director at a uh, director identifier given by their first name and last name. And I'm going to create a small uh, mutable database with the uh, quotes um, in our application. So I'm going to define a val called director details uh, database or something like that. And I'm going to uh, consider that a mutable map of director. And I'm going to create another case class called director details or something like that. 
Um, and I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to import the mutable package from Skull Collection. And director details is going to be a case class, and I'm going to place that at the top. So I'm going to create a case class called director details, and you can add as many details as you like. I'm just going to contain the first name and last name, and if you want to do uh, genres or whatever, I'm going to uh, you you can add them here in this case class. So I'm going to create first name as a string, and the last name as a string. And uh, let's just have a genre as a string or as a genre enum or whatever you might want to add in there and uh, create that as a more complex case class than the director. Okay, now we have a director details so-called database. If you want to use an actual database, you can use some other libraries for doing that, but I'm going to keep the example simple and I'm going to consider this as an in-memory database as a mutable map. So I'm going to create immutable map and I'm going to consider Zack Snyder and uh, I'm going to have the director with the name Zack and Snyder and some director details with uh, the first name Zack Snyder and some genre, if you want some superheroes or whatever, uh, I'm going to add superhero here. All right. Now, my code doesn't compile because this map takes tuples as um, constructor arguments, so I'm going to use the thin arrow here to construct a tuple with the director and the director de details. All right, cool. So this is our mutable database, and in this case, we're going to try to fetch a director from this mutable database. So I'm going to uh, fill in the implementation of this um, this path over here. So I'm going to have director details database dot get from uh, a director instance, and I'm going to do a pattern match in case we get a sum with director details. I'm going to return an OK response. I'm going to have OK with their details. And because this is a case class, Cersei can create an encoder. So look at this, Cersei entity encoder, and I'm going to call this as JSON. We have an extension method for all case classes generated by some implicit instances generated by Cersei. All right. And in case we get a none, and I'm going to return an HTTP response with not found. So that's going to be a 404. And the message is going to be no director. And I'm going to inject the uh, director. I'm going to use an S interpolate the string. So no director, for example, Stanley Kubrick found in our database, which would be a massive shame. And um, this is going to be the implementation of our director routes. So in this case, we learned how to return an OK response with a payload as a JSON payload and a 404 with a message uh, embedded inside. Let's take a look at the HTTP routes for movies, and we're going to learn how we can return some other kinds of HTTP responses. For example, if you are uh, encountering a parsing error, for example, if the year value is badly parsed or badly specified, we should be able to return some kind of like a bad request with the year improperly specified. So I'm going to show you how we can return a bad request with a parse failure in case of this uh, query parameter here. So I'm going to change the optional query param decoder matcher with an optional validating query param decoder matcher. Validating means that the parser will return some sort of an error if it's unable to parse that particular query parameter. So I'm going to change optional query param decoder matcher with optional validating query param decoder matcher. And I'm going to re remove the rest of this stuff. So optional validating query param decoder matcher means that whenever you parse the query parameter denoted by the year type, so this thing, year, this is not an optional year anymore, but it's a validated of um, 
optional year if I remember correctly. So this year thing will have a different type. And here in this case, we have a query param decoder of a year, and we want to return a parsing error if the query param decoder is unable to create a year out of that particular int. So instead of query param decoder int map, I'm going to say emap, and emap comes from either, and emap will take a value of type int, so I'm going to have year int, just to make the type clear from the name. And I'm going to try to create a year instance out of this year int. So I'm going to have try with year of year int. And I'm going to convert that to an either. So to either. And either will return a throwable in case of uh, this expression throwing an exception. So we'll have an either with a throwable and a year. And I want to map that throwable to a parsing failure that HTTP4S uh, understands. So I'm going to call the extension method of either pro uh, provided by cats called left map. And left map will take an exception or throwable. So I'm going to call this E for exception. And I'm going to convert a parse failure out of it. So I'm going to create parse failure. And parse failure is obtained from org HTTP4S. So this is an error that HTTP4S understands. And I'm going to um, put e get message inside. And the details is uh, if you want to uh, contain the entire stra stack trace or some kind of detailed error message, I'm just going to pass e get message inside. In the blog version, you will understand you'll have some details of what these parameters also mean. So now instead of a plain year, optional year, which can return none, we will return a validated instance. And we have a video here on the Rock the JVM channel regarding idiomatic error handling in Scala, and we have the validated data type in there as well. So now we have much more power in how we can handle parsing failures because this year can be uh, parsed badly and we can return the appropriate HTTP response out of that. So I'm going to return something like a bad request if this year was uh, not properly validated. So I'm going to say year match case some, I'm going to call this Y. And Y is a validated instance. So this is an optional of a validated instance. I'm going to call this, instead of year, I'm going to call this maybe year. So that we don't confuse the names here. So I'm going to have case sum with validated year. And validated is a validated instance in cats, which may contain an error. So I'm going to call validated year dot fold. And fold is a method that takes two argument, uh, two arguments. One is a um, function from a parse failure to um, the response that I'm going to obtain out of that, and a function that takes a regular year value and returns another kind of uh, response based on that. So in case I get a parse failure, I'm going to return a bad request. And bad request takes a payload as an argument. I'm going to say the year was badly formatted. And the second argument is from a year value, and I'm going to return an OK. And it's under these question marks that I'm going to run my actual business logic inside the back end of my server. So now I need to search my movies database for the director and for the year. And I'm going to go to the article version and I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to add my first movie. So I'm going to have, for example, the Justice League thing. So we have, um, the Justice League movie, and we have a bunch of methods that I'm going to shamelessly copy from the article. So I'm going to paste them at the top. So we have a movie with a bunch of details here. We have Zack Snyder 2021 and a list of actors and the director Zack Snyder. We have the movie's map 
which is the so-called movies so-called database so I'm gonna call this movies DB or movies or whatever and I have some uh, simple methods find movie by ID and find movies by director and the movie ID is a unique identifier I'm going to import that from Java Util UUID so this is internal to me so this is internal uh, database and uh, here under the methods I'm going to have some business logic right so these are examples of the business logic that you might want to implement in your servers so we have a find movie by ID uh, method that just does movies dot get and we have find movies by director and we're going to use simply call filter on the director collections and I'm going to call to list on that so we have our business logic that we can implement here under year so I'm going to create a small uh, variable over here I'm going to call this movies by director and I'm going to call my so-called business logic find movies by director with that director name all right so we have that as a string and I'm going to uh, filter those by the year so I'm going to have movies by director and year and I'm gonna have movies by director filter such that the year of that particular movie is year dot get value and finally I'm going to return my OK response from my server so I'm going to hold OK with movies by director and year and I'm gonna automatically convert that as JSON with the functionality provided by Cersei. So this is my final response of the get endpoint. All right, and in case we get a none, so this was the case for some with a validated instance, and in case we get a none, case none, I'm going to call okay with just movies by director because we don't have the year here so because the year query parameter is optional we just need to call find movies by director so because we are calling find movies by director again I'm simply going to put that at the top all right so I'm going to move that up top and I'm going to simply call movies by director dot as JSON all right, so we have fulfilled the endpoint with get movies under a director and perhaps under a year. All right, now for the last endpoint that we have not completed yet, we will need to do something very similar, but a little bit more uh, simply this time around. So in this case, I'm going to call my so-called business logic to find a movie by its unique identifier. So I'm gonna call find movie by ID with the unique identifier movie ID that's because we have a UUID var and I'm going to return all the actors inside so I'm going to map underscore actors so we have a an option of a list of actor and if we have a sum with a list I'm going to serialize that list to an HTTP response if we have none then I'm going to return a 404 with no movie uh, or no actors found. So I'm going to have match and I'm going to have a case sum with actors then I'm going to return the HTTP 200 OK with actors as JSON with the auto magic JSON serialization for lists of strings and in case we get anything else so we get a case none then our movie was not found here and so I'm going to return a 404 not found with no movie with ID movie ID I'm going to inject that uh, here All right so movie ID found in the database all right, so these are our endpoints, the endpoints for movies and the endpoints for directors. Now, if you want to 
stitch all of these routes together and create an application, you will need a movie application. And you will need to create some paths and wire those to the director routes or the movie routes respectively. And you need to start up your server. And to do that, we will need to create a cat's effect application by making this object that I call HTTP tutorial extends IO app from cat's effect. And IO app has a bunch of runtime objects there, which include some execution context and so on and so forth. And it has a method called run, which returns an IO instance. So I'm going to override the run method. So the run method takes a list of string as an argument and returns an IO with exit code. So IO from cat's effect with exit code. All right, now inside, I'm going to create a router instance which wires the paths of my application to the HTTP routes of IO. So I'm going to have val, let's call this APIs. These are my actual endpoints. And I'm going to instantiate a router from HTTP 4S. And router takes a bunch of tuples from strings which denote paths. So I'm going to have slash API with uh, movie routes with the effect type IO. So now the effect type F is not abstract, it's concrete, it's IO, and you inject IO at the end of your application. And perhaps if you want to return all the directors or if you wanted to a post or something like that, then you would have some other API. I'm going to call this API admin or API private or something like that, which does the direct routes. So this is an example of how you can wire different kind of routes, different kinds of routes to different paths in your HTTP application. And I'm going to type this to IO as well. And I'm also going to say or not found in case we don't hit any of these endpoints. So this is an alternative method of wiring different kind, different paths to different HTTP routes. An alternative is to use all routes complete, which is an HTTP app. So this all routes complete or through the router instance, there are alternative ways of doing the same thing. All right, so now if you want to instantiate your server, you will need a Blaze server builder. And this employs the builder pattern, and I'm going to type it with IO at the beginning. And I'm going to pass an execution context so that your HTTP server can run on a thread pool. And I'm going to use the cat's effect thread pool for that. So I'm going to use the runtime that the IO app provides, runtime.compute. And runtime.compute is an execution context on top of which this HTTP application is going to run. Then I'm going to bind my uh, ports over here. So I'm going to bind HTTP with 8080 and I'm going to add the name localhost here. Okay. And now I'm going to use with HTTP app. And with HTTP app injects the logic of the server, which you can use either the APIs or the all routes complete if you wish. So I'm going to use all routes complete. And then I'm going to say uh, use because the expression up to this point is a cat's effect resource. So I'm going to call the use method on that. So I'm going to have uh, IO never. So I'm go never going to stop this server after it started. And then I'm going to say as exit code dot success. And I'm going to call resource here so that I can turn this whole application into a cat's effect resource. So this is the start of your HTTP server based on HTTP 4S and all routes complete is the logic of the server. You can alternatively, as I mentioned earlier, you can inject the API's router inside. So I'm going to mention that here. And this is your server. And now you can safely run this application. So hopefully my code compiles. So I'm going to right click and run this application. And our server is running. So I'm going to go to my console and I'm going to try to get a uh, movies slash director slash year. So I'm going to 
used get slash movies with director uh, Zack Snyder and year is 2021. I'm actually going to copy this and I'm going to open a terminal and uh, hopefully this is big enough. And I'm going to say curl and I'm going to use localhost 8080. Of course, I'm going to have HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8080 and then I'm going to paste this entire path. So movies, uh, question director Zack Snyder and year is 2021 and hopefully I should get something in return. So I'm going to close my quote and Godspeed. And now we have a JSON object here with ID. We have title Zack Snyder's Justice League with actors and whatever. And um, if you want a prettier format here, you can use the JSON PP utility here in the console, or you can use the HTTP. Uh, this is a very cute application for a console. So I'm going to have HTTP get, and I'm going to have the same URL. So I'm going to copy this HTTP get, and this is going to return the properly formatted JSON with the content length, content type, and HTTP headers. So we have a properly formatted uh, JSON array with the movies, actors, director, ID, title, year, and so on and so forth. All right, so this is the properly formatted response from our server. So this tutorial was pretty comprehensive and the application that we wrote here was pretty compact, but we learned a bunch of things. So first, we learned how to create query param decoders, either as optionals or as validated instances or with standard data types. So you learned a bunch of things here, how to support some different data types in your query parameters and make HTTP4S parse those automatically for you. How you can create get post endpoints, so you can have the method and then the path with optional query parameters. I also showed you how you can chain multiple query parameters in the same path or in the same kind of request. The logic over here is pretty straightforward, but we used some validated instances for some optional query parameters if you wanted to parse those automatically and return some bad requests if HTTP4S cannot automatically parse them for you. So you can use the library or and, and make it work for you without you needed to take care of the parsing aspect and just return the business logic that you wanted out of those results. So um, query parameters, get, paths, optional, validated, in one go then we had and then we have automatic parsing of path elements so we have here a pattern that we wanted to support for a custom data type under a path argument so not under a path parameter but under a path argument so that was interesting how you can chain routes together with semigroup k alternatively how you can define a router on which you can specify explicit starting uh, APIs, and so starting endpoints or path prefixes, if you will, and bind those to parts of your routes. So you can split that logic into your application and compose them together in the at the end of the application. And finally, how you can start your server, inject the logic inside and start to serve HTTP requests. So this, my friends, was your tutorial on HTTP 4S in Scala. I hope you liked this video. If you did, click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Give me feedback in the comments. I read every single comment. If the video was too long or too short, or if it was complex or too simple, I read every single one. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material. And finally, check out my cats and upcoming cats effect course on the Rock the JVM website and the other hundreds of hours on the Rock the JVM website. I post lots of content on Scala and Akka and Apache Spark and cats and type level libraries and so on and so on. It's almost never ending. I'm Daniel signing off and waiting for you in the next video.